Okay, well, um, yeah, so, so my name's Sean. Uh, you can get a hold of me at these addresses. And um, I want to start by channeling my former advisor, George Church, who always starts every talk with a conflict of interest slide. And actually, I don't, I don't have, George has been doing this for 30 something years with his lab. I just started two years ago. And I, I can only kind of put up an interest slide with only a few conflicts. But, so I'm, I'm going to just start with, uh, you know, I have, I have funding from these groups. I've worked on CAD software for DNA nanotechnology, so self-assembling nanostructures built from DNA. I used with, you know, collaboration with, with George Church, my other advisor, William Shi, and uh, Ido Bachelet. Uh, we built these uh, DNA nanobots that we, we see as a prototype for targeted delivery of, of drugs to cancer cells or maybe any type of cell that you want to target. Uh, I also think a lot about communication and how do we take these complex and potentially scary ideas and transmit them to people in a, in a very clear and simple way. Um, and so I, I like to employ diverse forms of media to do that. And actually growing up in this kind of SynBio area, I was really inspired by people like Drew Endy and the whole SynBio community, which also includes George. And I was actually a, a mentor to the Harvard team for the, the iGEM competition in 2006. And so a few years later, I realized I actually want to start my own iGEM, which uh, I called Biomod. And I think this year we're going to have our thousandth student come through. And th so it's kind of like iGEM, but rather than reprogramming nano machines by rewriting their, their DNA or the, their genetic material, this is kind of like taking those building blocks and self-assembly nanostructures at, at the nanoscale. And now um, I started my lab in the CMP department at UCSF. And so what I want to tell you about today, actually I want to start with this um, CLL or this uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia that's been in the news recently. And just to refresh your memory, uh, this, is, this is a form of leukemia that is going to cause close to 5,000 deaths, deaths in the U.S. this year. And the interesting thing is actually this company, Pharmacyclics, has developed a drug that seems to work sort of less bad <laughs> or less badly against CLL than, than sort of other things that are available. And AbbVie actually just purchased this molecule for $21 billion. And so, but that's actually not the price of the molecule. That $21 billion is for half the molecule. J&J owns the other half of it. And the, so the true price is actually $42 billion. So this is how much it costs, I guess, now to buy a drug that works for some small fraction of leukemia patients. And um, this is, of course, you know, FDA, FDA approved, and it's really been de-risked. But it's, it's a bit crazy that this, this number is larger than the entire NIH budget by like $10 billion. <laughs> So that's kind of all the basic research that's going on. Well, not all of it, but like in the biomedical area in the country. So everybody you know, <laughs> that's doing all sorts of things. Uh, and, and yet we're investing this amount of money in, the, in these drugs. And then uh, this, the, another interesting trend, which maybe fewer, uh, fewer of you have, have uh, heard about. Well, I think uh, we, we realize that uh, cancer immunotherapy is the future. It's on the horizon. And in particular, these uh, enzymes like IDO and TDO, uh, which, which seem to suppress T cells in the, in the tumor microenvironment, so kind of shut off your immune system where, when you have cancer. Um, this, this company, Flexus, has been developing a compound. It doesn't have a, a generic name yet, so, but, but this seems to, it has potential to inhibit these enzymes and basically allow your immune system to do its job uh, around your tumor, around your cancer cells. And this company was just bought by BMS for $800 million. And this is actually, I think, much more interesting, right? This is pre-approval. These are, these are like preclinical trials, right? And that's just one molecule. So this is really high risk, and we get even kind of big numbers are going in, in this direction as well. And so the connection that I want to make for you today is that all of this work has really been done without the aid of real BioCAD software. And by real, I know that people, everybody here used computers to do this, and they have software, and actually some quite impressive software. But it's not really real software in the way that the taxi companies that use software to write or to, to route the um, taxi drivers five or 10 years ago, they were not using kind of real uh, 
software that we, <laughs> like real transportation software that we have now, which requires GPS satellites in space and everybody to have a smartphone, right? But then you get to kind of make the real software that you want to write um, in that case when, that, when those tools become available. And so um, what we can do with biology and computer-aided design is basically now 3D print anything that we want and actually, so there's a nucleosome, and there's a 3D printout of this. And it was actually easy for me to make this slide because I had exactly this slide on the first talk that I gave as a grad student 10 years ago. And so I've been thinking about this for a while. And um, what I want to suggest to you is that maybe CAD Nano is actually could be like the Zip2 or the ViaWeb of this space, right? And it's actually really hard to write the software. It's really complicated. It's not obvious how to do it. And um, but I'm happy to say that actually I've just moved into an office in Genentech Hall, so I'm, I'm located right here, and I'm actually surrounded by uh, many, many dozens of dedicated, hardworking scientists who are all doing amazing uh, basic research, and uh, they also don't yet have access to real CAD software. And so what I'm planning to do is actually collaborate with them and help them write that software that, that I think is going to be transformative for, for science. And so if any of you in this audience, if this resonates, um, I would love to hear from you. I love partners, collaborators, investors, uh, whatever you think you might want to bring to the table, I'd love to talk to you. And so with that, I'll just thank you very much for your attention and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference.